Maruchan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maruchan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maruchan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maruchan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. Home-cooked holiday meals are almost here. So today on CityCast Portland, we're talking with farm-to-market expert Molly Natariani to help us figure out what's new in seasonal fruits and veggies. As the former executive director of Oregon's Farmer's Market Fund, Molly's tapped into all the new hybrids Oregon State University has been working on and is introducing us to some new seasonal offerings that you might have overlooked in the produce section. Everything from psychedelic radicchio to the hippest, trendiest squash which is actually a thing I've learned. It's Thursday, November 16th. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. Molly, it's so great to have you on the show again. Oh, I'm so excited to be back. Just straight off so everyone knows, Molly is our executive producer's sister and Ever since she was on last time, we've been plotting and trying to figure out how to get her back on. <laughs> so I feel like w- this show was literally pitched like a year ago. And we're just like, and Molly could be on it. <laughs> 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 so now that most farmers markets have closed for the year, like where are some places to shop for local produce this season? Yeah, definitely. Well, I should say not all the farmers markets are closed, right? So we do have a few that are open year round. Obviously, the PSU one downtown. Um, the Hollywood Farmer's Market in Northeast Portland uh-huh. is open every other Saturday, and the Mono Villa Farmer's Market is open every other Sunday. Oh. And the People's Market, um, the People's Co-op is open every week on Wednesday afternoon and has been for like 40 years. So This whole time, I'm just like, they're done, right? No more markets. <laughs> no, no, there's less. Oh, there's less. Yeah. Okay. Put on your, your rain boots. Yeah. Yeah. Any other places like I mean, aside from farmer's markets, that people can get some local produce this season. Oh, yeah. I'm assuming, you know, new seasons. (laughs) That's basically it. That's all I know. Well, I mean, you know, there's new seasons. They're they're a great business and a great store. But if you want to support smaller, more local businesses, which is kind of like the same reason you probably want to buy directly from farmers at the farmer's markets. I actually think that the co-ops have like some of the best produce sections and like pretty affordable prices. So the Alberta co-op at Northeast and the People's Co-op in Southeast. Um, if you're looking for something a little fancier, there's a Rubinette Produce, which is like a produce market inside uh, Provador. And mm. that's like a whole fun shopping experience. But um, yeah, they do a really great job of supporting local farmers. And then if you want to like go all in, you could always buy a CSA. So Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if you want to find winter CSAs, the Pacific Northwest CSA Coalition has like a really great uh, map on their website so you can find what works for you. And then the last thing I'll say, I have never done this, but there's a new company called The Minnow that's kind of like Blue Apron, but it's oh. all Portland fruits and veggies and, you know, like local umi ramen noodles. What? So I know, right? It seems That's so, fun. so cool. But is it like a meal prep or is it yeah. just like, here's a bunch of ingredients? Yeah. Oh, cool. But it's yeah. like, here's a meal. Great. Because that's where we're heading here. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if we were just going to lean hard on what's growing seasonally, what are the fruits and vegetables we should be eating? I mean, in my head, I'm just like, obviously, pineapples and papayas, right? Oh, yeah. And like maybe avocados. And a guava. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that a rutabaga? Is that it? <laughs> just eat a rutabaga till like January? Well, I mean, you could. Um, how much time do you have for this answer? I, oh I, my God, really? There's more than a rutabaga? <laughs> there's so much. I've got like three tiers of fruits and veggies to, to make your brain explode. Okay, let's go. So, you know, like level one, I feel like this is kind of what you're expecting. But if you're buying directly from your farmers at the farmer's market or one of these grocery stores or CSA is like, you might get some fun new variety. So obviously like apples and pears, potatoes, um, winter squash. And there are so many different kinds of winter squash, right? You could even like mm-hmm. get a really big Hubbard squash and roast it as like the centerpiece of your holiday meal. So lots of winter squash out there. Um, you've got like your kale and your collards. 
all those greens. And there's actually something amazing that happens when the plants, when they undergo a frost, where it's like this natural antifreeze that like is a compound that the plants make and it makes them sweeter. What? Yeah, it sounds crazy, but it's like, it's noticeable. You can tell. Huh. Well, I mean, yeah. squash definitely is, yeah. you know, it's pretty banging in the in the winter. <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. What else we got? You know, like your carrots, your beets, you've got the like onions, leeks, garlic, cauliflower, I feel like is highly underrated. You can get purple mm. cauliflower, yellow cauliflower, orange cauliflower. So that's just like kind of, I think, the things that you're expecting. If you're getting like a little more adventuresome, there's some very fun radishes out there. Have you ever seen the watermelon radish? It's like, hot, yeah. it's like the color of my sweatshirt. It's hot pink inside. It's nuts. No. No, you don't yeah. even know. Yeah. Watermelon radishes were an obsession of mine the moment I found out about them. <laughs> well, hold on. The Northwest grows them? Yeah, For some yeah, reason, yeah. I thought they were like a fancy Southern food. No, they're, yeah, they grow <gasps> year round in our climate. Means, and I can yeah. grow a watermelon radish this whole time. Yeah. Cool. I, I love radishes. What else do we have? Um, Kohlrabi, I think, is also a sneaker mm -hmm. hit. Have you ever had kohlrabi? You know, I've heard about kohlrabi. I, I, is it in the turnip family? Like, it is. Yeah. It's like related to radishes. But it's mild, right? Like it's not yeah, like it's peppery. It's almost like jicama and apple. Mm. So it's like super juicy, sweet. Very refreshing. Ooh. So give kohlrabi a try. Um, I will. You just sold it. I love <laughs> jicama and apple so much. So that's great. I used to have a friend who actually was a farmer and like they would bring kohlrabi to like every party and just like have a pocket knife and like cut slices of it. And everyone was like, oh my gosh. This is that is the most like <laughs> farmer. <laughs> I just love the alt world I jumped into, Molly. You're like, yeah. And you just like have a pocket knife. Like, is that what you guys do? You're just hanging out? Just <laughs> Slice and call Robbie <laughs> off to each other. That's so cool. It could be you. <laughs> cool. But you know what? I do need a new personality. I feel like this is this is the the season to try one out. Oh, well, call Robbie girl. Yeah. I mean, you know, the next step I think after call Robbie is you could be that person who has a stock with Brussels sprouts on it in your bag. Oh yeah, that's a good one too. I've been that girl. I've been that girl. <laughs> live in the northwest yeah um anything else uh, fruit wise or so yeah we've got you know you do have your rutabaga you got the parsnips the celeriac some other fruits that are a little more obscure but i think are very special are like the quince and the persimmon mm -hmm. super delicious sorry the quince just sounds i mean to me i don't want to say that she's stuck up but i just feel like <laughs> a quince like you know what I mean? Like, aside from a jam, like, what are you doing with a quince? No, it's true. I actually, it's funny. I was, like, on a walk a couple of weeks ago, and I saw a quince, like, someone had a quince tree in their yard, and it was clear that someone had, like, thought it was an apple, and they tried to take a bite out of it. <laughs> and they were like, Ugh. You cannot eat a quince until you cook it. It was just, like, discarded in the street. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, if the quince had a life story, it would be that picture. <laughs> Stumbling down the sidewalk. I know. But in my head, because it sounds so fancy, it's in a way I do blame it. Because I'm just like, you're called Quince. Like, you know what I mean? It's like Queen and Prince put together. Yeah. Ex oh, my God. Yes. I never thought of that before either. You're so fancy and you don't even taste good unless a, people put in a lot of effort. That's why yeah. I think she's stuck up. But you yeah. know what? It's fine. Yeah. No, Sorry. same. Quince is, yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Um. Yeah, what else is there? All right, well, so we're into like my, the like most advanced and most obscure, if you like really want to have your finger on the pulse of like Pacific Northwest's finest winter uh, fruits and veggies. I would say, have you heard of kaleettes? What? Like little kales? Yeah, so Oregon State University is like our, you know, ag mm -hmm. institution. And they've been doing tons of research over the last few years to kind of like help discover new winter varieties that farmers can grow and sell and then, you know, figure out how to get people to eat them. And um, the kaleettes are one of those things that they've been working on. So it's like a cross between kale and Brussels sprouts. They're, they're these like teeny cute little Brussels sprouty things. Aren't they cute? But they're kale. Yeah. Oh my God. And they actually look like they're yeah. on the stock, but it's like a little head of kale, but it's a little baby. I know. It's like a little kiss of kale. I know. And then you can like, yeah, they're, they're adorable. This is my new, th like, I'm like, this is what's happening this winter. <laughs> I love kale. <laughs> I just want to see, what, I want to figure all this out. Oh my God. Could you imagine like the crispy, you know, when you make kale chips? Oh, I bet. <gasps> abs 100%. They're so good. It's amazing. And so you could just do the whole yeah. little guy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh my yeah. God. Molly, I'm so, see, this is why you're here. 
<laughs> oh, so good. I'm so happy to spread the good word. I mean, I think if you're into kellets, have you seen all those pink chicory? Do you know about this? No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, so there's a whole world of radicchio that apparently where we are in Oregon is like a similar latitude to the part of Italy where they grow these. Oh, yeah. And so if you think of like radicchio that's kind of like in your salad, you know, mix that you buy in a bag at the grocery store, it's like purple and really bitter. But there's this whole like insane and amazing world of radicchio that are like they're like beautiful pink flowers or they're like green and pink polka dots. Oh my God. If winter is a bummer, like the most luxurious, like fantastic feeling is eating these beautiful chicory that were grown outside. I have to just explain to listeners, it looks like a fever dream. It just looks like a flower petal that's collapsed on itself and there's a bunch of layers. Yeah. Wait, what does that taste like? Does it, is it as bitter? It's not. I mean, there's like tons and tons of different kinds, right? And I think it also experiences this thing where when they undergo the frost, they get a bit sweeter, but it's like, we can't grow lettuce at least very easily, if at all here in the winter. And so this is like our, our regional lettuce. Um, they're very oh. crunchy and refreshing. Some of them are like mildly bitter. Some of them have almost no bitterness. So it's like a, it's a spectrum. You got to try them all out. It's beautiful. Like, I just want to grow it. I just want to, like, see it in my yard, you know? It's gorgeous. <laughs> all right, well, let's take a quick break here. And when we come back, ideas on how to cook all of these new veggies. You hear about, like, the kellet, the pink radicchio, yeah. all this stuff. But then you're like, great. Like, I only know how to make four things. Like, <laughs> dishes <laughs> that you can make with what's in season. Do you have any favorites? Yeah. I mean, like I will say, I think that like the most universal way to enjoy all of the fall and winter's veggies is to do a good roast. Like no matter what it is, mm. I think that they all like that's a really good base, you know, like olive oil, salt and pepper, um, like slightly higher heat, maybe 400 degrees. So they get a little crunchy. Um, like the, you know, on like your winter squash, it would get a little caramelized. Don't put too much on the pan because they'll steam instead of roast. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, all of those kind of fall flavors will just be like really sweet and rich. Or if it's like your kale, it'll be like super crunchy and fun. Roasted, uh, cabbage is also a total joy. And then when you get it out of the oven, you can decide if you want to like what direction you want to go with like herbs and spices. You just like could do anything with it. You could have them on their own. You could mix them with like you know, grains and put like a dressing on them and have a grain salad. You could puree them with like some cooked down onions and like make a soup out of it. Mm -hmm. I feel like roasted veggies are like, yeah, just always good and hard to screw up. And like, I don't think there's a single fall, yeah, veggie that could not be good that way. Huh. So you're just basically like throw it in the oven. Yeah. Throw it in the oven. I mean, I think you could also go like the other direction or you could like, oh my gosh, my brain is exploding. You could have the same vegetable two ways. So okay. you could have like roasted veggies, but I also think like a um like a raw slaw of like grated, you know, oh. like beets, carrots, even like parsnips, um, celeriac, and then you put kind of like a bright dressing on it and maybe some like fresh parsley is like I feel like winter food is often, you know, it's like heavy and well cooked, but this is just like you get the sweetness and it's like very refreshing. What kind of dressing do you put on a raw slaw? I, would... I love that it rhymes too. <laughs> Do like a you know garlic, lemon juice, olive oil, vinaigrette. Um, okay. But you could also go in like a you know citrus kind of direction. You could also do I don't okay. know sesame oil, something more. I didn't know you could eat beets raw, Molly. Like you oh, blow yeah. my mind. You gotta make what? make them small. You know, like I would do like either like the shredder thing on like or like you could do the box grater and the shredder thing on your food processor. I don't think you want like huge chunks, but yeah, little pieces is delightful. All right, I'm gonna have to Google raw slaw. That's great. Mall is raw slaw. <laughs> okay, anyhow. So, you know, this year I'm thinking about just going out to eat for some of the holidays rather yeah. than, than cooking at home or even hosting. I know you're like a farmer and you make stuff. And <laughs> I, I know that you're like, <laughs> that sounds awful. But do you have <laughs> any favorite <laughs> restaurants that are doing interesting stuff with local produce that you you could like point me towards? Yeah, totally. Um, so I think one place that is always delightful is Cafe Ollie. Have you been there? It's in the oh, old yeah. Ned Ludd space. Oh, I've been to Cafe Ollie. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. And I feel like they just, uh, you know, work really closely with local farmers and they just always do the veggies right. Mm -hmm. Lovely's 50-50, the pizza place on Mississippi. Um, you know, when I used to work at the farmer's market, saw Sarah like every single morning with her little red wagon, you know, collecting all of her veggies from the farmers. So 
that's a great place if you're looking that for pizza. such a beautiful image too, just thinking about her, just like with a little wagon. Totally. Yeah. Um, if you want something that's like a little less fancy or not a sit down restaurant, there's this fantastic food cart that is in my neighborhood. It's called Sorbu. It's um, on 42nd, kind of in the mm. Los Pepitos parking lot. And it is a Tuscan food cart. They make these like chickpea sandwiches, which are heavenly, but it's such a simple menu. They always like, they change it every two weeks and it's just like super seasonal. And yeah, it's a delight. I want to go there. Yeah, it's so good. And they're so sweet. Nice. Before we wrap up, I mean, is there anything else you want to shout out? Oh, there is. There's one thing I forgot about, um, which is I think I mentioned that Oregon State University has been doing all of this work to kind of help growers with their get more winter vegetables to market. And there is specifically this amazing project called the Culinary Breeding Network Hmm. that actually works with farmers and chefs to kind of make that connection and help um, chefs say kind of what they want in a vegetable and help farmers. And then they do these like super fun events. And it's just like a a wonderful celebration of winter veggies. So and there is not one happening this year, but they made a website and it's called eatwintervegetables.com. Okay. (laughs) We'll we'll throw that in in the links. But it's, it's like, it's exactly this. It's like full of recipes. It talks about all these different winter veggies in Oregon and like their story and how you can cook them. So that is a really good resource. Oh my God. The picture too. There's just like all the hits. Oh, like yeah. literally, like everything that you just said is like just chilling out here. Yeah, looking cute. Ooh, about the ooh, recipes. That's what I want. Yeah, oh, yeah. nice. Oh my god, this looks so good, you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna try all this. Wait, what's a tets- tetsu kabuto? Oh, tetsu kabuto. <laughs> Whenever I say that word, I like can't remember the second half of it, and so I start saying it, and then it just kind of like tetsu kabuto. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like half of English for me, Molly. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's like a very the tetsu kabuto is like a um it's a very hip squash i think it maybe is a storage squash that lasts longer than other squashes and has like oh. a sweet and delicate texture like the kabocha it's a it's a very now squash <laughs> oh so it's like a real trendy s- yeah. squash is what you're saying yeah <laughs> oh my god it's black it's like dark green it totally looks like a designer house yeah I want to see it split open because I'm like, what's inside this? Like, incredibly. Oh, it's just, it's orange. Okay. (laughs) Who would have known? It's no watermelon radish, but it's okay. I know. I was like, what's inside? Oh, it's a squash. It's a squash. A squash is inside. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Molly, for hanging out with us, giving us some great ideas. Oh, my pleasure. This is so fun. Oh, my God. I'm never going to stop saying Ross Law. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Seriously. And now for your microdose of news. If you haven't had a chance to check out the Portland Art Museum and Pam Cutts' new movie theater on Southeast Division, this weekend might be a perfect time to do so. The Tomorrow Theater is continuing their Doc Now Festival by pairing up iconic documentaries with their Bill Hader and Fred Armisen produced documentary Now spoofs. For example, this Friday night, you can catch the double bill Marina Abramowicz, The Artist is Present, and its satirical take, Waiting for the Artist, starring Kate Blanchett and Helen Murren. The award-winning Jiro Dreams of Sushi will be shown on Saturday with its counterpart, and Agnes Vardas Faces Places shows on Sunday. Also, PDX Pop-Up Shops, the program that transforms vacant retail spaces into temporary shops for local designers and artists, has gone up this week. With everything from dog treats to wine, it's a good way to support downtown Portland, local artisans, and get ahead of your holiday shopping. Speaking of wine, Wine Country Thanksgiving events are starting this Friday. That's the Willamette Valley wine country tradition of kicking off the holiday season with special tastings, food pairings, live music, holiday discounts, and some other fun experiences. Each winery celebrates the festive weekend with its own flair. You can find links with more info on all these events in our show notes. And for even more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland. Well, that's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's. Slim's.